Hi there. We're in this season of listening to God, trying to get a sense of what we feel God is saying to us. And I thought it'd be helpful if uh, we heard from our association team. So welcome to Elaine and John. And uh, we've already had a message from Tony, our moderator, but he's obviously an important part of our team as well. Um, so what is God saying to us? I'll start with Elaine and uh, any reflections, Elaine, on what you sense God is saying to us? Well, I woke up this morning thinking, where is God? And on my um, Facebook page came up a video, uh, a new video, a song of Thy Kingdom Come, or from Thy Kingdom Come, from the LICC. And it really spoke to me. And I sent it, the, the YouTube version on to, to both of you. And um, it was the words, trans, well, the, the chorus goes, transform, revive and heal society. And there was two sentences within the song that really struck me one was make us again what we were made to be and then there was another bit which said forgive us lord when we did not engage and those two got me thinking so much um about yeah when have i not engaged particularly over the last 12 months through this pandemic and um it would be wrong of me to say that i engaged with god every day because i didn't um, but now that we are coming slowly out of this um, awkward season that we've just had, I feel that God is um, there with me once again. He's never let me go, but he's just making his presence known to me again by little bits and pieces that he's doing. Thank you. And, and I'll put a link on to that YouTube video at the end of this so that if uh, yeah. you wish to uh, uh, pick that up. It is an excellent song by Andy Flanagan. Uh, can recommend that yeah <clears throat> John over to you yeah thank you I, I think the question is a, it's a bigger question but, a, but also a slightly deeper question I think the bigger question was well, two questions it's not is what is God is saying is what is God said saying and also what's God doing uh, amongst us and, and answering that is a little more tricky because uh, it's not just about what I feel or what anybody else feels it's actually what we come to that, you know, we weigh it together and understand that this is of the Lord. And so we offer it and then see, is this really of God? But I think there are some threads coming through about anticipation and expectation. I think we should always have that anyway, because God is a creator God and he's ever creating. And when he says in, uh, when, when the God's word says, you know, we are new beings in Christ, we are new and continue to be made new. So God is always doing a new thing. It's not doing new things. He's always doing a new thing. And I think that that calls us for trust and for patience, the calmness and to be caring as we always seek to enter into the new thing that God has for us. And he continues to have new things for us. And we'll do that until Christ returns. And so as a fellowship of churches, as a fellowship of God's people, is how do we enable uh, each other to move into the new in the situations that we have? And do you want to try and answer that question, John? <laughs> I think it's answered in things like the words like trust, patience, calmness and caring. And I think enabling is probably a better word than simply somebody running ahead and say, shout, <laughs> shouting, come and follow me. It's a walking together. I, we talked about being relational in, in the last two years, and I think we are being called to be relational. Yes, I, I do sense that very much, that uh, yeah. um, there is that yearning amongst us in, in, in our churches to be more relational with each other, and, and let's find ways of doing that. That's not institutional, but uh, um, informal as well as formal. Um, yeah, and, and coming back to your first point, John, um, in Reimagine, we have a, a, a learning reflection cycle which talks about listening uh, and looking and learning and living. And I think we need to employ all those aspects, listening to what God is saying, looking at what we see God doing, uh, learning from one another and from, from, from putting things into practice uh, and, uh, and uh, living it out uh, and, 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 and then seeing actually that God leads us back on into, into the cycle again. So it's, it, it never stops. Yeah. Uh, and then just to share a thought myself, I was really struck by um, 
Alan Donaldson at our uh, um, assembly, and you can pick that up if you've not heard the, the video on YouTube. And just a kind of a, a caution, if you like, that um, we can always be lulled into a sense of complacency. We see that with the uh, the pandemic, and we see what's happening in India, and and mm. how uh, you know for for most of the pandemic up till the spring, it, it had gone reasonably well for India. They 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 kept everything under control, and and you think well somehow they've taken their eyes off the ball, haven't they? And and, and there's other factors as well, like new variants. But uh, I think in church life as well uh, as 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 the pandemic, we we can become complacent. We could think, okay, we're through the worst. Uh, we, we just go back to the way things have been. And um, I, I do sense that God is calling us to a longer uh, period of, of, of unsettlement, a longer period of, of uh, uh, things not being uh, as we would ideally like them to be, that there's still a work to be done. There's still a deeper work to be done. And Alan Donaldson talked about control. I think that's probably at the heart of it, that one of these dragons that we need to slay, maybe the the biggest dragon we did to slay is who's in control of our church? Who's in control of our association? Who's in control of our own uh, journey? Uh, you, you use the word trust, John. And I think uh, we are being called into a deeper trust, into a deeper dependence upon God and, and to give up some of the um, uh, the hold that we like to have on, 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 on all aspects of, of life. Um, and so that this, this ongoing challenge is, 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 uh, uh, one where we're being unsettled, uh, shaken a bit from from keeping control and and having to learn to put God in a greater place of control, which means yeah. uh, that continuing listening uh, to 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 the new things that God is saying and doing, never thinking right, we got it now, uh, we've done this season of listening, that's that's all finished. Thank you very much. Uh, it is an ongoing process, and uh, and never to lose that sense of having to follow God. Another thing that God said to me just to finish. Uh, quite recently, or I felt God was saying to me, I was out for a walk in the woods, just following a little stream. And I just sense God saying, follow the river. And uh, the river in, in scripture is often a symbol of the life and the the, um, the work of the spirit. Um, and, and as I followed this little river, it, it meandered. And, and at one point, it just went backwards the way it seemed to have come. I thought, hang on, the river's going the wrong way. Uh, and so often, actually, we, we want to go in a particular direction and God's saying, no, I'm taking you another way. And, and are we open to going that other way that God would lead us? The meanders. We don't we want to go straight there. But God often takes us a more circuitous route. Uh, he sometimes works in, in, in a different time scale to us. Uh, and are we willing to to follow the river of the spirit rather than the route that we would choose? Any last words from either of you as we uh, uh, finish this particular time? Well, the, the phrase from that um, song that I was talking about earlier was make us again what we were made to be. It took me to the Great Commission in Matthew, um, just remembering what we are meant to be doing, um, not only loving each other, but in um, commissioning others to be disciples of Christ. Um, it just really struck me that sentence. Yeah. And, and again, it, it concurs with what you've both been saying. Thank you. That's a yeah, I think it is simply to, to seek God for mm. who he is and to seek to be with him. I think we can be over overly focused on what we must do and um, and, and what we must change, and what we mustn't change or whatever else, you know, and, and, and set up really false dichotomies, I think. Um, actually, we're called, first of all, to seek God, then seeking him to, to obey him. Mm. But it's actually God, and we need to put... God himself first, before the things of God, if you see what I mean. Amen, absolutely, that's really helpful. Thank you. And thank you for your contributions. <laughs> <laughs>